So this is um, Dreams to Reality Foundation, uh, item lot 19586. Wow. I remember in 1977, waiting in a four hour line for Star Wars. And it was a big deal back then. And sadly, Carrie Fisher passed away. And, you know, it was a really tragic event. And her mother, of course, Debbie Reynolds also passed away. I met Debbie Reynolds and I met Mark Hamill too. We have a beautiful picture together on uh, Facebook. And, um, you know, it's really uh, the culmination of a beautiful career. You know, life does come to an end and it happens at some point and we never really know when that's going to happen. So we should live every day to the fullest. I know that Carrie Fisher really had some beautiful things in her estate collection and we're unveiling for the first time her auction catalog. This is the catalog that was put out uh, and lots of really beautiful things were auctioned off at, at the auction. This was just opened a few moments ago. This is the first time it'll be open so I'm going to be careful with it not to mess up the edges but I'm gonna tip it out and then we're going to go through it and take a look at every page. And we'll keep the box, because of course the box is part of the deal, is the original box. Profiles in history, put this out. This has been in our inventory for a little while and because someone had asked for an opportunity to learn more about the auction, we're gonna go through every single page of the auction catalog and holding the camera is Hannah. Hannah, let's make sure that, you know, we are able to see every, every image and every page. This auction was held October 7th, 8th, and 9th in 2017. And I'll be careful not to bend the cover. I won't crease out the cover, but uh, we will go through the pages at a time. First of all, let's read the opening letter from uh, Joe Madalena. Dear Collector, to all the fans and admirers of Debbie Reynolds and Carrie Fisher, it is a great privilege for us to be holding this auction. Debbie and Carrie were both dear friends of, our, of ours for many years, and we worked closely together in assembling the three history-making Debbie Reynolds Hollywood auctions. They are both truly missed. The aim of this sale is to celebrate the lives and careers of these extraordinary women to allow fans and admirers to acquire something that held special meaning to Debbie and Carrie. The new owners can preserve, cherish, and share them with friends, family, and fellow fans. We took great care and spent months gathering and organizing this special sale. Beginning with Debbie's items and then segueing to Carrie's collection, starting with items from her childhood. Some items resonate with their distinctive personalities while others relate to their exceptional careers. There are so many great items here and we are happy to know that they will be cherished and revered by future generations. Portions of the proceeds will be going to both Debbie's charities, the Thalians and the Jed Foundation, a charity chosen by Carrie's daughter, Billy Lord. We hope you enjoy perusing the catalog and participating in this very unique sale. Wishing you the best success in obtaining the items most special to you. Respectfully, Joe, Madalena, and the PIH team. So let's go ahead and start, and we will not look at the auction language because that's all the legal uh, small fine print that they have to put in there. And let's start with the opening page. So here we have the personal collection of Debbie Reynolds. It's a long letter, but I'm going to read it anyway because Debbie was a truly uh, special and wonderful actress and talent. It is hard to describe the feeling of going through a lifetime of belongings and artifacts that were cherished by the single most important person in my life while mining through treasures which would have strung together span the length of a football field, I had to decide what to keep and what Debbie would have been pleased to share. I know the history of each piece in this catalog and there were many I struggled to let go of. 
One of the countless things I loved about my mom was how much she loved her people. It was that love that fueled her desire to build a Hollywood motion picture museum just for them. For this reason, she collected costumes and artifacts from films of the 1920s to today. She knew that fans all around the world cared as much as she did about the history of Hollywood and its stars. Her magnificent obsession rubbed off on me. It became a dream we saw together to build a Hollywood museum for everyone to preserve Hollywood's magical history. Debbie Reynolds taught me everything I know. I went to auctions with her and together we shared this vision. She was focused on collecting and seeking costumes and props from historic films. I further expanded the vision by collecting and adding cameras and lenses that shot many of the greatest cinematic scenes in the history of film. As my sister once said, these are the tangibles. All of the personal pieces of art in this catalog lived in my mother's home. The artworks you'll see on these pages meant so much to her that she moved them from home to home over the many decades she owned them. My mother also attended auctions where she would quickly acquire personal belongings of her friends and people whom she admired. She kept them in a special place of honor in her home. I remember her attending the estate auctions of Elizabeth Taylor, Ann Miller, Esther Williams, and others. She loved owning an intimate piece of their lives and, I believe, would be pleased for her fans and passionate collectors to have the opportunity to own a piece of hers as well. After all, she was a true fan and passionate collector herself. I hope you will see pieces in this catalog that speak to you as they did to her and that you will enjoy owning a treasure that belonged to the most magnificent person I have ever known. Signed, Todd Fisher. All right, so let's go through the auction. We've got a, an Erte bronzed bud vase. We've got green glass column pedestals, a Tiffany Studios Floriform bud vase. So there's some pretty glassware. I mean, really beautiful stuff. Then we have, you know, lots of wonderful uh, antique glass. I love green and green decorative glass here. I'm not gonna pull the page open because it'll damage the catalog. She has a beautiful Michelle Pershing fountain pen, uh, dancing figures, uh, Carrie Fisher's childhood, Rand, McDally, Walt, Rand McNally Walt Disney character globe, wow. And I, I'm sure the hands of Carrie Fisher played with this over and over again. Etched glass, decorative pieces, green decorative pieces, purple glass, antique decorative objects, uh, these are some vanity items for you know brushing your hair, and it uh, looks like there's a, a pin tray there. Colorful decorative art glass. You've got a basket here with a, a green liner and silver plate. Uh, mantle lusters, carved rose quartz vase. Uh, you've got some opaque green glass containers, and let me pull this up a little bit so you can see it. Debbie Reynolds' personal collection of four novelties. Some interesting things. And then there's some, I don't know if they're Ming uh, or, or uh, you know, maybe they're reproduction, uh, but beautiful Chinese uh, artifacts. You've got a planter here. You've got some ginger jars. Um, you've got some vases and you have a chest. This is called a sewing box kit in rosewood made in China. A ruby inset King Dynasty, or Queen, I think it's pronounced Quinn Dynasty wall pocket, which is a very interesting piece. Um, some French panels. Uh, this is an outhouse gifted to her by Carrie Fisher. So another piece from, from Carrie. Um, a monumental French gilt wood floral and foliette carved mirror attributed to Camille and other films. It's interesting. A mammoth oval mantle mirror. We have also the Debbie Reynolds 1956 Modern Screen Award Silver Plate uh, Trophy Cup. Debbie Reynolds Studios is in North Hollywood, not far from here. And you can see a ballerina here. She has a dance studio, which is still in business today. 
uh, black amore arm wall sconces, an ornate gargoyle and cherub silver metal framed mirror. Wish you could see the detail. It's kind of hard from the video, but it, even really close up, you can see it's a beautiful piece. Venetian black amore stands, lalique cherub candlesticks, and you've got some rock crystal wall sconces, hummingbird stained glass wall hangings. And you know the most exciting stuff for me, because I am a Star Wars fan, is coming later. So as we go through, we can see decorative arts, uh, lots of furniture, lamps, things that you may or may not find interesting. I find them interesting because I find all those things interesting. Uh, you can see a wonderful, um, uh, you know, what is a Edward G. Robinson Benson and Hedges humidor. And if you don't know who Edward G. Robinson is, I think his very latest film or last film um, was Soylent Green with Charlton Heston, but he had a great career and did lots of movies. Now, on this side is a Merle Oberon Empress Josephine Royal French Daybed. And you can see here, it's beautiful daybed, beautiful furniture. I'm guessing she liked furniture, and that was something that she really enjoyed. Um, and then let's continue. A lot of furniture, you know. Um, when you acquire this catalog, you can take a look at her beautiful furniture. And just, we'll continue to go through. I have a feeling a lot of the Star Wars fans are gonna be interested in what comes at the end. Lovely pieces from all eras. Uh, this is an apothecary chest prop from the Egyptian, which was, a, I guess, a 1954 vintage, you know, screen used prop physician's chest. Uh, it, obviously, it's a Egyptian movie. I have no idea, really, what that movie was about, it makes me want to go watch it now. Uh, here's an Iranian rug, a carpet that was gifted to her by the Shah of Iran. Uh, it's a, I think it's a lot bigger than you might think. It looks tiny here, but it's 98 by 60, which is pretty enormous. And a Steinway. Look at that fancy Steinway. Harold Lloyd's personal Steinway. And if you don't remember Harold Lloyd, very wonderful silent film actor. He blew his finger off and he always wore a prosthetic finger in all his films, in case you didn't know that, which was a really bad prosthetic finger. It looked like he was wearing a rubber glove. You know, he had like that rubber glove finger, but it never stopped him from having a wonderful career. He, he moved on, it happened in a film, and you can study this, but he just moved on like it never happened. Um, then we have a wonderful 1930 map to the Stars Homes, Hollywood Celebrity Homes by Mary Margaret Netz, one of the earliest published and most decorated celebrity homes maps. Wow, that is cool. And a Rudolph Valentino personal tapestry of himself as Ahmed in The Son of Sheik. Beautiful, beautiful posters, marquee posters for all kinds of projects, Marlena Dietrich. Um, if you don't, if you're not familiar with Louis Icar, I, I think it's pronounced Louis Icar. Um, I, I have one of his original etchings here at the donation center, which is for sale, which you can check out on our store. But um, the colors, just beautiful. I mean, the photographer who did this captured all these images. Boy, it's just wonderful. Stan and Laurel uh, Hardy, excuse me, Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy, Wax Heads and Hands. There's a film out right now about these two fine gentlemen. Uh, Frank Sinatra bookends. The kind of things she collected were just magnificent stuff. Very good taste. Very, very wonderful taste. Um, wow, just neat stuff some still life paintings, some whimsical clowns, uh, Art Nouveau, figural amphora. Now they took multiple pictures of it because it was so cool. Vincent Price self-portrait, that's special. That's really special. You know, at the very end of his career, he did the voiceover for Michael Jackson's Thriller. And there are some bronze sculptures, which if you know anything about bronze, this mercury, which you can tell from the feet, but I, I read it, but I also knew that was mercury. You can tell that bronze sculptures take a lot of time. They're very hard to make, and it's a big deal to make them. 
These are wonderful Yorkshire Colonial beer drinking um, Toby mugs, and they're kind of fun. And she has them uh, with these whimsical characters. They're drinking, and then the mugs allow you to drink as well. Uh, I think this is just fabulous. Um, these are just wonderful. Pewter Steins, more uh, mugs, Royal Dalton mugs. Royal Dalton made a lot of Toby mugs. Oh, Dom Nancy. You know, I have never seen this page. Dom Nancy is the most exquisite art studio that made glassware. Always ornamented, always fancy. Just beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. Here's a ship's decanter. And the reason they're ship's decanters, they have a really big flat bottom so they don't fall over. Mary Pickford, silent film star, molded glass decanters from her personal collection. Bohemian uh, cut glass. And lots and lots of beautiful, beautiful, beautiful porcelain pottery. Uh, just some wonderful things. Uh, dinner plates. And some of these are silver and some of these are silver plate. Uh, these are Oneida silver plate. Nothing fancy. I mean, they're probably expensive at $100, but since they belong to to Debbie Reynolds, they're probably worth a lot of money. Um, the silver pitcher, which I think is a good deal at 100 to 200 estimate. Uh, punch bowl sets. These are things you can find easily on eBay, but because of the provenance, it makes them so much more valuable. And some miniature books. You can see her books collection. Her puppy, her dachshund puppy dog mailbox and her outdoor wrought iron furniture and a wood-burning stove. And now we get into costume and fine jewelry. Lots of costume jewelry. You can tell by looking at it that it's costume, but um, but it's, it's fun to look at. And you see the Deb's drive-in neon sign. And now we get into personal vehicles. Now, this is a 19, 1994 Seville. And uh, I actually saw this car because I, like, met Debbie Reynolds in the 90s and she was driving this car and she was over at the house of Marvin Page who had a wonderful collection of really Hollywood memorabilia. Much of it had Debbie Reynolds in it, like pictures and movie posters. And she was there looking for things for her upcoming um, grand opening of her casino. And she had her custom Mercedes Sprinter. It's a van that was used for her touring and she could, you know, drive around in it. It was very comfortable. More jewelry items and glasses. I don't know which of her glasses I saw, but one of these glasses, she had just Debbie on it in, in uh, Swarovski crystals. And I'm not sure if it's in this collection, but that was the ones that she was wearing when I met her. And you've got perfume bottles and You've got costumes and clothing and dresses, a uh, wonderful collection of things that she wore over the years and she kept them, an MGM sweatshirt. You can see a picture of her with her daughter, with Carrie Fisher. You know, I was told never to say, you know, daughter, and just say Carrie Fisher, because I don't know why, you know, people get referred to as, oh, that's her daughter. Yeah, I guess she is her daughter, but Carrie Fisher is in her own right an extremely famous person, so. I shouldn't just be saying her daughter. And more fun stuff, you know, movie posters, singing in the rain. Here's a wonderful picture of her, you can see. Beautiful photo of her with her chiffon dress on. And more movie posters, some pictures of her in the later years and her glory days. Her fan club. Gene Kelly was the honorary president. Some pictures and posters from various places. And it's a lot of stuff here. A lot of stuff here. Pictures from famous people. George Carlin, an early Jay Leno, Eliza Minnelli. Uh, she, apparently she liked Clark Gable enough to get a signed Clark Gable check. You know, it's one of Clark Gable's checks that you can see there. Of course, we know all these famous faces. There's so many of them. Um, so let's take a look. Wow, a chariot. What is this? A massive chariot. Let's take a look at that. What is that? 
massive chariot Roman style ticket booth from Debbie Reynolds Hollywood memorabilia museum at her Las Vegas hotel. That's fun. And then let's take a look at this. What is this? The golden age of Hollywood mural painting, three segments by the artist, you know, three segments by the artist. Um, let's see who are these faces. Gosh, everybody's in there, literally. Now, if you don't recognize all of these people, you can spend hours trying to figure out who the famous faces are. Oh boy, there are some wonderful faces in here. Natalie Wood up here in the corner. Oh gosh, Marlon Brando, Charlton Heston. Mm, boy, Robert Redford. Just look at that. It's just wonderful. Mm, Kirk Douglas. Katherine Hepburn, Betty Davis. Uh, it's just you know, Jimmy Stewart. The list just goes on and on. And let's continue. All right. Some great things. I think this is a real, this looks like a real Colt revolver. Yeah, it's a real Colt revol revolver from uh, it says it's the firearm features, it just, I guess it's just a Colt revolver. Her personal 45. Neat stuff. Just great stuff. Costume sketches from her films, I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah. Look at that. Costume sketches. You know, for, from the costumer, the designer, Charlie Chaplin. Look at that, with gray hair. You'd think it was blonde, but we know he was older in this picture. It's gray hair. Gary Cooper, James Cagney. Boy, she had some great signed photos from some of her, some of her favorite actors. I'm not sure if she knew them personally. Like I said, I met her at Marvin Page's house, and he had quite a collection of autographed photos and she was going through them to purchase them. I'm a big fan of Yul Brenner. I think he's a terrific, uh, terrific talent. And I think he did The King and I for thousands of performances on stage. A historic MGM 1924 merger celebration document signed by 175 Golden Age stars. At that and more bric-a-brac and uh, ephemera and more posters from just endless numbers of projects you know the Debbie Reynolds section of this catalog is just astounding keep in mind this is merely a fraction of the things that were in her estate mole Richard mole Richardson century lights with their C stands. I wonder why she had so many lights. Maybe these Fresnel lights and lenses and things were things she used at the Debbie Reynolds dance studio. I don't really know, but you know, she collected lots of fun stuff and cameras. These are old movie cameras, but they're really the kind of cameras that individuals would use. This is more professional equipment. This is a Fox News 35 millimeter hand cranked Le Pelvo motion picture camera from 1909. Wow. A hydraulic crab dolly. Look at that. What in the world would you do with such a thing at your house? An Apple II computer. Wow. And look at this. A Sony high VF format camera with still video recorder. Ooh, interesting stuff. Condenser microphones. American Zotrope THX1138 film camera. Let me read this again because this is an interesting piece. I've seen this movie. Francis Ford Coppola and George Lucas had a fierce need for independence. Early into their relationship, they purchased what would become their first house professional motion picture camera this very eclair cm3 it was purchased 
from Warner Brothers before the beginning of THX 1138. I'll let you read the rest when you purchase it, but this is the original camera from that film. A Model B Bell & Howell with a tripod. Let's see if there's any other famous movie cameras. This is huge. This Mitchell is enormous. Look at this thing. It's a tank. I think there's another page in here. More Mitchell equipment and lenses, cinematic lenses. And here's a photo of it's just if you don't recognize these faces, <laughs> you've been living under a rock. Wow. Look at that. Some great moments in history, you know. Beautiful stuff. And more costumes and dresses. I call them costumes because they look like costumes. You know, there's just a ton of them. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Here's a suit that was worn by Roddy McDowell, right there. Another wonderful actor. Mae West owned this gown. Mae West, could you get a load of that? Mae West costumes. More Mae West stuff. Barbara Stanwyck and Julie Andrews. Julie Andrews, Barbara Stanwyck. She was quite the collector. Audrey Hepburn. The Rat Pack nightclub performance tuxedo. Wow. Just wonderful stuff. Lots of firearms. Apparently she was a collector of firearms. She liked them. This is a collection of, you know, what are, uh, you know, late um, Victorian era, you know, firearms, and then, you know, early 20th century firearms. And an Underwood. What in the world did she do with the Jeep? Maybe she got it at Army Surplus. What do you think? Probably. A wooden plaque from MGM United Artists. Some more furniture, barber's chair, lots and lots of cool things. A fantasy deep sea diver's helmet, some bohemian art glass, a large planter from China. Elizabeth Taylor Cleopatra Ibis IV makeup stool from the movie Cleopatra. Look at that. This is attributed to Cleopatra too. I like that movie very much. A Norman Rockwell. Look at this. Carrie Fisher as a child. Neat photo. Some of the children's photos. correspondence, records, and here we get into the personal collection of Carrie Fisher. Oh, the phone booth with uh, Princess Leia. A Lego style. Look at this fun stuff. Neat. Neat things. The best is yet to come. Trust me. I know because I know. <laughs> I saw the auction items. Yeah, these are fun things. This is just personal collections, you know. Not gotten into the exciting movie memorabilia yet, but we will. We will see it. Disembodied hand mechanical drawing machine. Prince Commemorative China Plate. A Yamaha upright piano. And she was a wild one. She had a, a green Fiesta motif phallus keychain. Interesting. Millie Fiore. 
Now, they didn't call it Millie Fiore, but I'm aware of that that's Millie Fiore. They actually didn't call it that. They should have said Millie Fiore on the top, which is very, uh, uh, very handmade, complicated glass. Chewbacca Furby. Fun stuff. Harrison Ford. Mmm. Princess Leia parody religious candle. A personal photograph behind the scenes with the stormtroopers. Look at that picture. What fun. Lots of personal collectibles, furniture. I think with all auctioneers, they kind of put the good items together with sort of the less exciting items, although everything is exciting, but it really, the things that people really want, I think, are going to be the movie memorabilia, you know, the film and entertainment memorabilia. You know, these things you could buy on eBay for dollars, but because they belong to Carrie Fisher and you'll get a certificate with them, it makes them, you know, more valuable. Uh, some nodders, you know, things like that. But like I said, most of these items you can buy easily at any antique store for a nominal sum, nothing too expensive. But when you get into the things that are unique to Star Wars and Carrie's career, you know, things like pictures of her, it becomes a lot more valuable. And here we have a micro mosaic hand mirror. These are typically made in Italy. They take little pieces of glass and make mosaics into different objects and artifacts. And we have uh, Theodore Roosevelt, Tricky Dick, and it looks like Carrie Fisher and Debbie Reynolds were in a photo together with Richard Nixon there. Lots of interesting artwork. It looks like this is a wax apple, yeah, plastic apple. And like I said, lots of things that are just sort of tchotchkes and bric-a-brac and some interesting stuff, but uh, this is very cool. Edith Head, and, uh, you know, Edith Head, um, if I remember correctly, and it's been a really long time since I heard about Edith Head, but I think she was the, was she the head makeup artist or head uh, uh, costumer? I'm not, it was either it makeup or costume, but you can look it up on Google. I, did, I don't have a computer next to me, but Edith Head photo, that's an interesting picture. She apparently liked dogs and cats. She was an animal lover and lots of paintings, lots of artwork, stained glass, wall lamps, lots of fun stuff. I think you probably bought this brand new. It was probably less than they're, what they're asking for it, but because it's her property, something valuable. I don't diminish the value of uh, auction collectibles. I just, you know, when you look at what it is, you know, you have a beautiful kaleidoscope here. I mean, this kaleidoscope is easily worth 200, which is what they're asking for it. But many of these things, you know, if you bought them online and didn't know who they belonged to, would not be worth much. Stained glass is beautiful pieces. Um, but like I said, the best is yet to come. This is funny. <laughs> Ass juice maker. Um, it's funny. Uh, Loose lips bring down starships. Star Wars parody poster by Cliff Chang. That's cool. There's no room for demons when you're self-possessed. Hilarious. Elizabeth Taylor as Cleopatra and Richard Burton as Mark Antony. And you've got uh, throwing up the middle finger. I wonder why she did that. She was honoring George Lucas on stage with her Star Wars co-stars at the 2005 AFI Achievement Award ceremony. I'm not sure what, I'll have to watch that video and see why she threw up the middle finger. Lots of fun. Mis miscellaneous collectibles, a coffee cup chandelier. You have this gun for hire, a Fet Noir series film noir mashup poster, a diner banquet booth seat, kind of fun, a lightsaber, a rec replica prop lightsaber, apparently used 
It says here it was a replica, so it's a licensed replica, not the, not from the movie. And lots of fun furniture. I'm flipping through this pretty quickly because to me, this isn't the meat of the matter. This is a shock therapy ECT device, which I think is kind of interesting that she had such a thing. These were horrible things that people used for trying to treat the mentally ill. Although I think a lot of times people weren't mentally ill and they tried to treat them anyway for simple things like just being, you know, rambunctious. People are trying to treat kids for being rambunctious. I think that's silly. Don't give kids drugs for that reason. Carrie Fisher acrylic tribute display. A flip phone. My goodness, $1,000 for an old flip phone you can buy for $5 on eBay. And I'm not kidding. Just because it was hers, it's worth a lot of money. I believe everything in this in this auction actually was successfully sold. I don't think there was much left over, you know. She had quite interesting eclectic taste. A Princess Leah figure in a in a uh, vintage reliquary box. Some of her personal clothing. Lots of clothing. If you want to pause, you can do that, but really, uh, no offense to Carrie Fisher, I don't find these things to be particularly that exciting, and I like to keep it real. I think this is fun. Crocheted space puffs. Yeah, that's cool. Sir Lawrence Olivier from the film Come Back, Little Sheba, signed to Carrie Fisher. That's neat. A Star Wars patch signed by Carrie. And then the fun stuff begins. Coming to your galaxy this summer. Um, contact sheets from the PR photo shoot. That's neat. Wow. Just some neat stuff. Personal bound presentation script for Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. Signed by George Lucas. I wonder what that sold for. The estimate was $30,000. Neat posters. Ooh, look at that. I've seen these posters. I've never seen this one before today, actually. Pictures of, I mean, actual checks that she wrote. And I think that's cool, but I mean, people write thousands of checks back then. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm still writing 200 checks a month, and that's just because I run a business. But um, neat stuff. Look at these. Lobby cards. Some cool Star Wars stuff. People Magazine. You know, cool, neat stuff. Lobby cards. I already said that. Ah, one year old today. May the force be with you. We've got a little cake. Wow. She really cherished these things. Photographs from her appearance on Saturday Night Live. Ah, Carrie Fisher's personal Hands, it's a hand annotated shooting script from Star Wars Episode Five. That's the one where she, you know, struck up the romance with uh, Harrison Ford's character. Neat, neat stuff. Lots and lots of unpublished behind-the-scenes photos. Tons of posters from the films. You know, press kits, more press kits, a presentation script signed by George Lucas, you know, her onset to chair, an Academy of Science Fiction, Fantasy, and Horror Best Act Actress nominee certificate for Return of the Jedi. Just neat stuff, you know. A photo of her with Harrison Ford and Mark Hamill. Apparently she was really fond of both of them. She had a lot of pictures with them. A beautiful uh, oil painting. It's a very nice painting. Postcards from the edge. She has a sterling silver fork, personally engraved, gifted to her by Chevy Chase. Neat. Neat stuff. Tiffany and Company pen holder.
and comics that she collected, graded comics, CGC graded, which means they're encapsulated and someone went through and graded them. Slave Leah, Perfume for Women. I don't remember that. That's neat. Here's a replica of the Medal of Bravery from the Battle of Yavin from Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope. And a Jabba the Hutt maquette. Some cool things. Wishful Drinking by Carrie Fisher. Signed book. I remember these. I sold a bunch of my uh, Star Wars collectible figurines. They were not in the blister packs anymore. But um, if they were, they would have been worth a lot more money. Just a lot of neat stuff, you know. You've got, they are coming from outer space, erotic Star Wars themed limited edition art print by M. Loeb. Unopened frames, book set signed by George Lucas. A letter from George Lucas thanking Carrie Fisher for remembering his birthday on his personal letterhead. Dated May 17th, 2013. Ms. Carrie Fisher, 1700 Coldwater Canyon, Beverly Hills, California, 90210. Dear Carrie, thank you so much for the gorgeous birthday roses and beautiful vase. They are so colorful and truly brighten up my office. And even though I think it may be too cold in outer space for underwear, who am I to argue with a princess? Thank you again for thinking of me on my birthday. With love, George. P.O. Box 2009, San Rafael, California, 94912. And here's the end. We're coming to the end. Okay, this is Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens, an advanced triple subway poster signed by Carrie Fisher. That's an interesting piece. I like it. And her closing item, the la well, almost the last item, it looks like. She says, remember, as you get older, the pickings get slimmer, but the people sure don't. <laughs> yours in Christ, in crisis. No, she says, yours in Christ and in crisis, Carrie. How cute. And here is the Debbie Reynolds Family Ranch in Creston, California. So get a load of that. Debbie Reynolds Dance Studio in North Hollywood. I've been there many times. 1992 did a rehearsal for Evita there. I was producing Evita for the stage. And Carrie Fisher, Life Size. This, we've seen this already. And that, my friends, is the end. And just to tell you how much I loved Star Wars, the very first Star Wars, when Star Wars Episode One came out for my 30th birthday, I rented an entire theater for all my friends and we had a private party and it was just fantastic. And I've had the pleasure of meeting, as I mentioned, both uh, Mark Hamill as well as I met Car uh, Carrie, you know, I met uh, Debbie Reynolds, not Carrie Fisher. Um, and I hope that you'll take time to consider our auction and you know consider purchasing this wonderful book. There aren't many out there, and there's a good chance that you may not find another one anytime soon. So please support a great cause for Dreams to Reality Foundation. Thank you, and I uh, hope you'll take it uh, under consideration. We'd like to thank our sponsor of this video, Jivago 24K Perfume. The unforgettable golden fragrance reawakens your sense of endless love. Learn more about Jivago 24K in the description down below. Use the discount code provided and a generous donation will be made to our foundation. Jivago 24K Perfume with pure 24 karat gold flecks suspended in the bottle. The fragrance of passion and romance. Jivago 24K. Is that ready? Rolling. Roll. Roll. Don't use any oh. of this. Don't okay. tell me. Okay, carry yeah. three. Ready? Yep. Hi.